And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Food Fighters. Food Fighters is a game that attracted me because it's designed by the Capels, uh, Josh and Helena Capel. But Josh, I know him because of his artwork. In fact, you can see his artwork here. Josh is one of those artists that when I remember seeing his first game thinking, wow, I really like that guy's art. And so here's a game um, where you are taking vegetables against meat. They are irritated at each other. Does it say why? No, nah, they just happens at night when you go to bed. Well, I don't know who wins. I just hope that there's enough dead bodies lit around that I can have breakfast in the morning. That sounds gruesome. So let's just get on to the game. So in this game, each player is going to have the their nine guys are going to shuffle them and put them out here. So we got bacon and we got steak and chicken against broccoli, cabbage, and onions. Each player also has three cards in their side. They have two spoons, a pan, three crackers, and there's a pile of beans. Now on your turn, you have three options. One thing you can do is you can say, I want more beans. In that case, you roll these two dice and that's how many beans you get. If you roll a splat, you just re-roll the splat. The beans are one and twos, and one of the dice has three on it. So the most beans you can get that way are five. Another thing you can do is you can switch two of your fighters if you want to. So you just switch them. If the fighter's carrying anything, so be it. And then the final thing you can do is you can attack. Now when you attack, you can only attack your mortal enemy, the one that you're thinking about. So you also can only attack someone you're adjacent to. So this chicken here, He's thinking about cabbage. He hates cabbage. So he can attack this cabbage. This chicken's thinking about onions. There are no onions next to him, forward or diagonally. This steak is hating brown broccoli. So he can attack this broccoli or this broccoli. So I say, you know what? I want to kill this broccoli. So I roll the two dice and I've missed. Because to hit somebody, you need to roll a splat. However, even though I missed, I get three beans. Yay! By the way, when you switch two people, you get a free bean. Now, if I had hit them, I would take this person and put it in front of me and then they would have to pick someone from the back row and move that person up and we keep going. So if there's empty spaces, those are going to be filled by opponent's fighters. Now after your turn is over, you can buy stuff if you have the beans. You can see here the cost of a pan or a spoon is three, the cost of a cracker or this extra red dye is four. You want to buy the extra red dye because it has lots of beans on it and splats. So this is great. The next die roll you'll have is three dice, whether it's to get beans or to attack someone and then you turn the red die back in. If you buy a spoon, you will give that spoon to somebody in your army and that person can not only attack someone adjacent, they can attack someone in the same row as them. So this guy can go after that onion over there. If they successfully hit someone though, the spoon is gone. You can give someone a pan. This pan covers up the thought pattern that they have. Now they can attack anybody. Again, on a successful hit, the pan is gone. And you can give somebody a cracker. A cracker is a defensive shield. When someone hits you when you, you have the cracker, the cracker smash and that's it. The only way for someone to take you out while you're holding a cracker is if they roll a double splat. One to take out the cracker and one to take out you. Players also have special cards that they can buy. Each of the teams has different ones. This one here is a meat shield. This lets you put two beans in someone's hand and they basically count as double shields. Bring it, says the chicken. This is a one-time use. It costs 10 beans and it's gone. Here you can play, pay eight to take another turn after your turn. And then this card actually goes back and you can buy it again. Here you can smash an enemy cracker or force them to drop a pan or a spoon. Again, that card goes back and you can keep buying these over and over. The veggies have the bean boost. This is a permanent special ability. Whenever one of your attack hits your opponent, you get two beans. Here they can take back a dead person. One time use. And here's a one time use where they can swap any two people, even including two of your opponents. Now you can custom build armies if you want. Let's say I want to be steak, broccoli, and onions. Well, you'll notice the thought bubbles don't line up there, but let's say I'm steak and I'm fighting against bacon. Well, then the game comes with a sheet of 
clings. These aren't stickers, they're like color forms when I was a kid. And you can put those on, and so you can have the people hate the proper people. Even if you buy an expansion set, I believe there's, there's candy and cakes or something else that you can fight. Anyway, to win this game, you need to knock out three of your opponents of the same type. So take out all three bacon, and you're the winner. Now, Food Fighters is a light game. It really isn't that heavy involved. I mean, the components and the artwork are amazing, really good looking. I really like how when you have one of these tiles, and they're not cards, by the way, they're nice tiles. When you have one, you really have the opportunity, when you put the spoon on, it looks like the guy is holding it in his hand. And then maybe in this hand is the shield, and he's thinking about the... Uh, the onion. And I thought it was kind of cool that they included those clings so you can switch these back and forth. And so maybe I want to be onions, bacon, and steak. That does sound good, doesn't it? Uh, and against somebody else. Now, my kids, you know, most, everybody wanted to be the meat. No one really wanted to be the vegetables. But the sides are different because they have the different uh, special abilities. I personally prefer the vegetables bringing someone back to life. Kill one of my people. Right before you get the third one, I'm bringing back one from the dead. I like that. And, and, and that's a small bit of asymmetricalness in the game, but the game is really just simple roll dice and see what happens. I mean, you could get really lucky, but there is some maneuvering things around, and of course you can move somebody and your component can move somebody, but you're eventually going to have enough beans where you're going to be able to buy something to take the other people out. Uh, the crackers are good, but it's the spoons that are neat because they let you attack someone from the rear, and you always have that chance of getting the double splat, which takes your opponent out completely. This game is... Light, like I said, and I think adults will be okay with it, but I think it's best with kids. My kids really did enjoy it. Um, they had a lot of fun, and it, it taught them some tactics. There are some very complicated games where you have different people fighting each other. This is a very simple one. You have nine fighters against one another. It's not bloody or gory. It's just vegetable versus meat, and that's entertaining and cute at the same time. So some very high production values. This is a very good package. The gameplay itself was very short. And my kids and I liked it and had a good time with each other. Yeah, good game. Food Fighters. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Shut stuff. Shut the door! Stuff. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>